Hello and welcome to this uh, video. Uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, a item that is very close to my heart, uh, which is the Norwegian M75 field uniform, uh, which I'm wearing right now, as you can see. Uh, only exception is the trousers. I, I do have the trousers, but I'm not wearing them because they're actually way too long for me. So, but you, uh, I will show them later. Uh, and the, uh, as I said, this is close to my heart. Um, this. I used this plenty in the field uh, when I was uh, in the home guard especially because we didn't have uh, much of the uh, newer things so we had to use the older things but uh, that's probably not such a bad thing because this is actually a very good uh, uniform uh, so uh, a bit of the history behind this is that in the early to mid 1970s the Norwegian army was still using the M51 field uniform uh, as a standard for uh, field use and this is uh, I've done a video on this and it's basically a copy of the US M43 uniform uh, you can check that out if you want to um, but it, despite this being actually a very good design uh, it's in my opinion the best field uniform of World War II uh, by the 1970s it was getting a bit uh, a bit old and uh, newer technologies uh, of course had Come along that were easier and cheaper to make so in from what i've been able to gather the starting in the early 1970s the uh, army was uh, starting to experiment with newer designs for field uniforms and uh, they were uh, fascinated by the swedish m59 field uniform which was, was a solid olive color um, field uniform that's uh, actually pretty good for its time but um, it, uh, it wasn't really that different uh, in my opinion going from the this to the Swedish M59 style uh, it's fully possible that some of the designs that they had made were uh, better than the Swedish M59 but uh, I'm not sure on that, but anyways, they uh, kind of decided to take a lot of inspiration from the design that we're currently using, of course, the M51, and uh, basically modernize it. Uh, this has a lot of features that are uh, directly copied from the M51, and some of the ways of doing things are very compatible with this. So, the earliest design of this was actually in olive green color. Uh, the overall cut was exactly the same, but the, uh, of course the color was olive green and it didn't have oh, shoulder straps like this does. Uh, I'm not entirely sure the, uh, for the reason of lack of shoulder straps because this had it and the, I don't know, uh, but uh, apparently they liked having, having shoulder straps. Uh, so that's what I went with on this second pattern. Uh, as we will call it from now on. And I'm, I'm a bit unsure if the the prototype uh, M75 secluded a new field cap, but, this, but they didn't end up in adopting a new field cap, so this is the older M51 field cap. And I'm also a bit unsure on the exact dates of the adoption of the camouflage version of this. Uh, this is of course what's uh, commonly called M75 camouflage, which is not the uh, not the official name, the official name is just Norwegian Forest Camel uh, and it's still being used today uh, of course with some variations to colors and so on uh, but it's a very effective camouflage for Norwegian uh, or Nordic uh, terrain in general uh, but we can safely say that in the mid to late 1980s uh, the camouflage version was taking over and it's been produced in huge quantities since then. Uh, I'm not sure if they still produce them, but these are still issued to uh, Norwegian conscripts and uh, they have newer uh, Gore-Tex field uniforms that work, uh, that they use most of the time. But when the temperature drops to way below zero, the Gore-Tex stops functioning. So uh, in a lot of cases, uh, the units will retain these and and use these on uh, when it's really really cold outside because it's uh, it works uh, pretty well uh, for that uh, 
today this is most commonly associated with the home guard because most of the home guard don't get the newer Cortex stuff, but uh, it still works fine. So uh, it probably doesn't deserve the uh, not the bad reputation, but the reputation of this being kind of a second line uh, thing. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's uh, take a closer look on the uniform as a whole and. Okay, so starting off with the field jacket, uh, hopefully we can get as much of it uh, in the frame as possible. But uh, starting at the very top, we of course have our hood, uh, which I'm going to show uh, how to uh, put together the, the buttons right here, because it's not immediately obvious how to do it, so uh, here it is. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to use the hood on this. Uh, most commonly it's... Uh, uh, worn with the hood for field use. Uh, sometimes you see them not being used, but most of the time you do. So uh, this hood is. Hang on. To undo this button. So this is attached through both of the shoulder strap buttons. Uh, and the easiest way to do this is. Uh, uh, this is from uh, my side, so you can follow the instructions, is to take the right side first and attach it to this button. This is the top button that you normally would attach this flap to, like that. Attach it to the button like that. And then you button up the top part. Sorry. Top part of the jacket, like that. Then you have this loose bit hanging about, which goes on this button. And now, just button it up, just smarten it a bit up. And in regular use, if you're uh, if you're on a on a drill ground or anything like that, you're supposed to hide up the threads like that, and the uh, color of the jacket should not be visible down the bottom of the uh, bottom of the hood, uh, like that. Uh, and some units go in further by rolling up the hood, but that's not uh, really a universal thing. That's more of a unit thing. Okay, so. We can start off by showing off the tag in here. We have M, which stands for medium, and 711, which means this will fit uh, jacket size 7 to 11. Uh, and uh, we'll get to uh, the tags on the jacket itself, but the hood is a separate item, so of course it has a separate uh, tag. Uh, and another thing you may notice is that the oh, the colors are a little bit different uh, uh, from the hood to the jacket. Uh, this is just a uh, regulation or a variation in uh, manufacture, so uh, uh, we would expect to see that. Uh, and moving on, we have. You can see a standard color here. Uh, these this can be worn open, like like this. Uh, this was uh, approved to wear over a service uh, uniform or a uh, you know, nicer uniform. And if we move on, we have the top button, which is just a regular, you know, just a regular button but the rest of the buttons are snap fasteners so uh, it's uh, it, it makes it way more uh, practical if for example if your body is uh, being wounded in the chest you have to get open the jacket it's very easy uh, and of course just for uh, general convenience it's very easy and if we move along into the tags on the jacket itself we have uh, Pretty much the same thing as on the hood, but uh, one thing you'll notice is that we have the number 10 
inside a shield. The 10 is the size. Uh, but we also have EU sizes, 50 to 52, which is... Um, I'm not really sure why they had both at the same time, and L stands for long, or lung, which is the Norwegian word. Uh, so I'm not uh, entirely sure why they had two size systems, but uh, there you go. And we have a manufacturer date here, 1997, of course, washing instructions. Uh, and on the uh, the coat uh, hanger thingy here, we have Kato Kato Ringstad, Kato Ringstad, which uh, pretty much made all of these. Uh, I have not seen any of these without the Kato Ringstad uh, logo here. And uh, of course, they make uh, lots of other things. They for the Norwegian army, they made helmets and uh, various other things. So. And as if we just open it all, all the way along here, we can also see we have a uh, zipper. Uh, on. This is at the bottom, so of course you can open it from the bottom if you want to, uh, even if it's uh, sl slide slided all the way up. Uh, but the general um, use of this is to not use a zipper uh, generally. Uh, you only use the zipper if it's really, really, really cold or windy uh, to not uh, let so much air out. Uh, but it will have to be really, really cold or windy for that to be necessary. Um, so moving back up a little bit uh, on the inside, we have tighteners. We have a uh, lace going all the way through. Uh, just tighten that up. Uh, to fit snugly around your waist uh, as you see fit. Uh, not elastic, by the way. Uh, not really a problem, but... And uh, just taking a quick look on the outside, we have... Uh, these are basically taken directly off of the M51 field uniform. These pockets are the exact same size and shape and everything, so... Uh, quite handy. Uh, later versions have a... Um, uh, Velcro here for a name tag, uh, which is I'm not entirely sure when that became a norm, but sometimes in the late 90s, early 2000s, I think. Uh, we of course have the standard Norwegian flag uh, on the right shoulder, uh, as was mandated, and uh, there was never any uh, official use of Velcro for patches on the side, uh, or sorry, on the uh, shoulder sleeve. So, of course, the lower pocket here is more integrated into the uh, into the fabric, if that's the right way to say it. Uh, and we also have a elastic cord in the hem of the coat, uh, which allows the blousing, which I showed you earlier. Uh, and of course, you can uh, do this, but one thing to keep in mind is that in official use, if you if you do this, uh, then you have to conceal the the uh, cord so it doesn't show on the outside. Uh, so if you do that, uh, some angry sergeant or or lieutenant or something may uh, may uh, give you some slack for it. Um, and one thing I forgot to show on the front side is we have a loop here for attaching the cord. So it goes under your legs uh, if you need to, and the, this would certain, certainly be handy if you're jumping uh, from an airplane. Uh, uh, lots of uh, uniforms of this area had this. Not really useful in in general, but uh, it's there if you need it. And just bring it back out. We have one interesting feature on the Backside, which is a poacher's pocket, and uh, this runs pretty much uh, all along the backside of the jacket. And I'm not, I don't even see here, goes all the way. I'm not entirely sure uh, exactly what this is for. Uh, this would, uh, I suspect, uh, this was made for. Uh, 
having winter gloves uh, easily um, uh, you can easily pack away in the back here or uh, extra socks or something like that but uh, uh, not sure of the exact reasons but uh, here it is anyway and this is present on both the uh, patterns of uh, M75 field uniform so um, but it's also conveniently uh, perfect to store a one and a half liter uh, bottle of soda or uh, <laughs> your uh, drink of preference. So uh, that's something to that's handy for some of you uh, hunters out there. <laughs> and just a quick look at the sleeves. We have reinforcements on the elbow. Um, we have tightening in the sleeves uh, of reinforcement here at the very end and one thing I forgot to mention is uh, so this is made of several layers of cotton so which is uh, sort of a drawback uh, in some sense is that in that if you get this uh, very wet it takes a very long time to uh, dry it off uh, so that's a not so handy part of this. But if you uh, if you impregnate it, it's uh, good with a sort of spray or uh, whatever. Uh, this is actually pretty waterproof for uh, at least in light uh, rain, in my opinion. So that's the jacket. Uh, let's uh, move on to the trousers. Okay, so here are the trousers, and you notice that these are olive green, not in camouflage. Uh, there is a uh, camouflage version out there that was made by a private company called Milrab uh, in the 90s and early 2000s, which was popular among some uh, professional uh, soldiers. Uh, so if you see these in camouflage, uh, you know they are privately private purchase and not official issue. Uh, and there isn't really uh, that much variation in the production of this uh, over time. We have we have the same snap fasteners at the front here, double snap fasteners, uh, which are quite secure. Uh, we have belt loops for a thick or wide uh, bandolier or pistol belt. We have buttons for uh, braces. Uh, and you would absolutely wear braces with these and not preferably not a belt because uh, braces are just more practical in field uh, conditions in my opinion. So we have two slash pockets on each side, zipper opening and on both sides we have these fasteners uh, or tighteners, whatever you want to call them, uh, to kind of uh, get a bit more snug fit if you want. Uh, if you're, for example, if you're not wearing very thick uh, layers underneath. Of course, we have brace buttons on the back. Uh, we have only one back pocket on the uh, back right side uh, with no button closure. Uh, keep that in mind. And as I mentioned, this, these are a bit long. So uh, we have cargo pockets on each side. Uh, but the thing is, uh, some of them only have on the left side, not on the right side, but this one has on both sides. So, uh, not entirely sure. I think it, it was just a early production variation, uh, but uh, again, not really sure. Uh, these do have some knee uh reinforcement not very much but this is very uh solid uh cotton material so this won't uh, uh this won't wear uh, through very easily so and as we move along to the to the bottom sorry if that's not the correct word uh we have uh lace tightening which uh at the time this was adopted the uh M66 ankle boot was the standard and this would certainly help uh, if you're wearing an ankle boot with uh, anklets or gaiters uh, you know, uh, just to keep the leg in place but uh, just two years after this was adopted 
the M77 uh, combat boots, which uh, reach a bit uh, higher on the on the leg. Uh, so this uh, works out for both systems. Uh, in contrast to the M51, which generally wouldn't work with uh, combat boots because it doesn't have this lace tightening. It just has a, like a button that you uh, use to tighten it around. Uh, and of course, uh, reinforcement at the bottom. These are very practical. Uh, along with the jacket, these are very popular in among civilians, uh, especially hunters and people who work uh, outdoors and so on. Uh, so overall, uh, in my opinion, a pretty fantastic design. Okay, so that's it uh, for this video. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is, as I said uh, at the start of the video, quite close to me. Uh, I've been waiting a long time to to uh, do a video on this, uh, and when I get the first uh, pattern, I will do a video on this on on that one as well. But this is the most uh, common one, so uh, uh, probably worth it uh, to do a longer video on uh, this one. So, uh, as I said, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything, then leave them down below as always. And until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.